All right, g'day, g'day, guys. Welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Today, we are going to be having another look at our redraft series that we've been continuing over the summer. Um, last time you were here, Lenny, we did the 2001 draft in podcast form, and then Druzy and I have done a couple on the side as well. Uh, but Also redrafts. Yeah. and Both look fantastic. <laughs> ah, right? thanks, mate. You're flirt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but today, Druzy's been given the flick, and we've had the upgrade to Lenny, the uh, the True Footy resident draft guru, so it is great to have you back. Lenny. Oh, thanks for having me again. It's an absolute privilege to be on here. Ah, oh, thanks, and mate. And ever since I've been on here, I've been getting a bit of a celebrity status in Fremantle. People have been coming up to me really? going, you're the guy off True Footy. You're not, kidding me. No, I'm not. <laughs> I had the same fan that came up to me at the stadium a while ago come up to me again the other day at oh, really? running Mark Hot Dogs. Oh, that's yeah, nice. I had a bit of a yarn. Yeah, that's cool. He was that's surprised cool. I remembered him, but I remembered him. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. I do remember uh, my friend Brendan once, um, he, who had at a time had only been on the potty once, was standing yeah. next to me at work. Like, maybe like the distance you and I are not talking to each other. Yeah. And someone went up to him and said, hey, are you from True Footy? <laughs> <laughs> And you're right there. Yeah, I was literally right there. <laughs> oh, that's cool. No, we, we do appreciate all that stuff. That's pretty cool. Um, but before we get into it today, guys, we do have to acknowledge our sponsor, Manscaped. Bush, uh, tell us all about your manscaping experiences. I've got to admit, it's been getting a bit of dust in the bloody nice travel bag that it comes with for a while. But I hope you mean the product. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's... I might, I might need to pull it back out of the bag again soon. Yeah, what are we talking about? <laughs> Manscaped. Okay. Lawn cool. mower, 3.0, okay, 20% sweet. off. Yeah. All that jazz. Mm. <laughs> On a serious note, um, we are very grateful to our sponsors, Manscaped, who have supported us through the off-season, uh, helping this channel stay afloat. Extended us to April or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. So, for a limited time, you'd have to say, uh, go to manscaped.com. You get 20% off their elite ball shaving products. Uh, we're using the code TRUEFOOTY20, all caps, all one word. And without further ado, we'll get into this little draft. Today, we're doing the 2008 draft, guys, um, which was actually the first draft I actually remember ever watching. Um, when was the first time you got into the draft, would you say? Uh, first draft I probably watched a little bit of was 09. Okay. The yep. year that Dusty got and Brad Shepard got drafted. Yeah, nice, yeah. nice. What about you? 2013, so sort of the, my age group, oh, yeah. and like I knew a few people. Like Maybe the year before, I sort of half glanced at it, but... Yep. The year I sort of was my age group, I really got into it. So, yeah. Okay, so we're showing my age here a little bit. But, um, yeah, I remember this is the one we got Nick Nat Nui uh, to join the West Coast Eagles. So we're going to do the top 15 uh, today, guys. And the we'll start off by going through what the actual top 15 was. For context, Jack Watts went pick one of the Melbourne Demons, arguably the most talked about pick one ever because uh, that didn't pan out so well for them. Yeah. Uh, my boy Nick Nat Nui went pick two before Stephen Hill joined Fremantle at pick three. Hamish Hartlett... Michael Hurley, Chris Yaron, Daniel Rich, Ty Vickery, that name really stands out there, <laughs> Jack Zeeble and Phil Davis made up the rest of that top 10. Collingwood then picked Steele Sidebottom. They did really well in this draft. Sydney pounced on Lewis Johnston, while uh, St Kilda took Tom Lynch, not the Tom Lynch that's currently at Richmond, but the one that is now at Adelaide. Uh, and Ace Cordy went as a father-son to the Bulldogs. And then Geelong picked up uh, Mitch Brown, which is the Mitch Brown that ended up playing for Essendon and Melbourne as well. Um, so, yeah, so a, a huge mix of names there. Some elites, some not so elites. Um, and today we're going to redraft that exact top 15 um, from, yeah, pick one to Melbourne to pick 15 at the Bulldogs. So, uh, I think what we did last time was that you went pick one. So, Lenny, we'll give you the honour of pick one today. Yep. But I guess a good way to start this video is to have a consensus on, or not not a consensus, but... We'll a range go. of saying who would you guys take at it, pick one. Exactly right. So, Bush, who who's in the frame for pick one for you? There's a few names here I like, actually. like And doing like my reading before this one, every redraft I saw had a different pick one for this draft. But I'm probably sort of have to go for a combination of longevity and like what they've done during that longevity, probably Rory Sloan. Rory Sloan, interesting. Yeah. Okay, yeah, this is a tough one to... To gather because oh wait they're just yeah. about the end of their careers but then there's some players who did well at the start of their career in the middle and then some yeah. players are peaking a bit later on now yeah. um, which we'll cover as well I personally went with Steel Sidebottom probably a little mm. bit of recency bias but he has been good throughout his whole career yep. um, he had one All Australian one flag and he came second to the Brownlow back in 2018 um, so uh Lenny, why don't you uh, tell us who you went with with pick one? And this is going to be the start of the actual redraft. Well, I went completely different to you two. And Did I you? Went, I went with Dan Hannabury. Nice. Um, he's played 221 games. He's got three top six Brownlow placings. He's won three All-Australians and he finished third in the 2012 Norm Smith medal. 
Mm, true. Yeah, uh, 2012. Was that the one where he got injured? Or does he, did he get injured in a couple grand finals? He I got think? injured in the game against the Dogs. Yeah. 2016. He definitely got injured then. That's right. Mm. Um, 2014, when the Swans just got pumped by Hawthorne. I don't yeah. think any Swans really rocked <laughs> yeah. up, with all due respect. But 2012, he had an amazing game. Yeah, true, true. Uh, yeah, I remember that very well. Uh, pick two is now West Coast. So yeah. I'll, I'll go pick yeah. two. So if we'll go clockwise, I'll, I'll pounce on Steel Side Bottom. Who I just mentioned there, um, yeah, massively good player. I over didn't want to know about Saturday night. Nah, bounce on some side bottom. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, and poetically, you have Fremantle with pick three. Yep, and the guy I alluded to earlier has fallen right to me, so I'll take Rory Sloan. He's sort of oh. shown a dependable like leadership role for Adelaide for a long time. Really productive inside midfielder. Yep. Handy yeah. guy to have. Yeah, how funny is it that we all got our first choice? That's cool. That shows how... I, I, I looked at this draft and I don't think there is a clear, absolute um, pick one. Yeah. Um, there's certainly like a few candidates that could have been taken with that pick. Yeah. Port Adelaide's now on the board, Lenny. Yeah. Uh, who are you taking? Uh, Dane Beams. I know he might be a bit higher up the board than what a lot of other people might have, but uh, he's one of my favourite players all time. He was actually, when he was at Brisbane, and a lot of my friends can say, I did say this, I thought he was a bloke that should have had a Charlie around his neck, mm. or a brown for those who don't know. Yes, I actually, he was the next name on my list, um, which makes me look down mine at Luke Bruce, um, who is a small forward, and um, I guess for the redraft, you don't always expect like a small forward to go really high, because generally, like in drafts, right? You, obviously, you want a big boy, or you want a big yeah. that can change a game. Exactly. But the I think the impact Bruce has had at Hawthorne, he's just been such a prodigiously good goal scorer. Uh, I think he's won their goal kicking award twice, and that's yeah. in a team that's had some really good goal kickers oh, in that team. Yeah. Um, and he's, he's a great partner with Gunston as well, um, mostly nowadays. Two All Australians, and obviously three Premiership. Uh, around his uh, around his neck, and the beautiful thing about him was he was a rookie pick forty seven of this year, so um, probably the biggest bolter in the list so far. Carlton is next. Who I'm going to go another guy who I was seriously considering for my first pick, even my number one pick if I was picking number one, and that's Nick Nat. Ooh. Even though he's had some injury issues throughout his time, when he's on the park, he's just a prodigious, productive ruckman. It's hard to see you going wrong with him. Yeah, other than a couple of health issues, but. Career best season in 2020 yeah. sort of became the player that we all thought and hoped yeah. he would. Um, Brisbane is now on the clock with pick seven. They took Daniel Rich, the rising star. Yeah. Who are you taking today? Uh, I'm very biased with this pick, but I'm going to go with Michael Walters. That is biased. I, think he's, <laughs> no, I think he's one of the best small half-forward flankers in the game. Uh, beautifully skilled. Um, and he can turn a game even though he's 178 centimetres, mm. so... I think you only have to look at his game against Port Adelaide in 2019, was it, Bush? When he had 25 posies? With the six, six goals, goals on there. Yeah, yeah. 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 2019. So that just shows you the talent he's got. And I mean, for a kid who got banished from the club when he was 19 years old to come back and do what he's doing, it's a remarkable story. Yep, I agree. I'm a big fan of Michael Walters, so I support that pick. Uh, I'm going to see your bias and raise your bias. <laughs> nice. Uh, there's some good names left here. But I'm going to pick my boy Luke Shuey yeah. uh, at pick eight for Richmond. Um, I was already ready to scribble that next to his name as soon as I saw he was available with your next yeah. one. Yeah, he's taken Shuey. Yeah. Um, so with Shuey, again, this is a good example of someone who, uh, by contrast, Hanabry started his career so well and hasn't really done much since. Uh, well, that's probably harsh. No, I just mean he hasn't been as strong in the second part of his career. Yeah. Luke Shuey has done the exact opposite where he took a while to find his groove. And I think since about 2015, 2016, he... Yeah. I think he was close to All-Australian in a 16, but I think he's been an elite player. Obviously, uh, Norm Smith medalist, uh, one premiership, and two best and fairest in a strong team as well. So, um, yeah, that's my nomination. Who you got next, El Busho? Ooh, there's two names I'm tossing up between here, but I'm going to have to go with Tommy Rockcliffe here, actually. Ooh. Ooh. There is a player on the board here that has slid horrendously, and uh, I won't say it yet, but um, I like it. But, yes, sorry, Tom Rockcliffe. Preseason yeah, he- pick five. Yeah, he's an outstanding accumulator of the ball, obviously. Like, he had some of those years up in Brisbane where he was just the fantasy based. Like, everyone mm, every year gross. had him as their captain in their fantasy team just because he was so prolific getting the ball, racking it up. Stuck on a bad Brisbane team, though, through most of his productive years, though, which is probably a bit of a knock. Yeah. And he hasn't been able to be quite that elite since going to a more productive team in Port. Yeah. 
Yep, fair call. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, Ad- Adelaide's on the board, Lenny. Yep. And go. I'm going to go with the original rising star in Daniel Rich. Ooh. One of the best halfback flankers. Beautiful kick at a football. Um, and now that Brisbane's really starting to play well, I think everyone's starting to appreciate his talent. Yes, I agree. He's um he's kind of found a niche as a long kicking defender, whereas obviously he started his career as a midfielder and really stood out because of his skill set. And then the game almost threatened to pass him by because he was so slow and maybe a bit yeah. physically limited. Yeah. Now the the way the game's transformed, they chuck him in the back line, and now he's really damaging with his left foot. So good pick. Um, there's a player here, pick eleven, and I think some people will hate how far he slid because I think some people will think he could be up in the top three or so. Michael Hurley oh, from yes. Essendon. Yeah. He's had a really good career, um, but obviously battled injury at times. Uh, he's won two All-Australians. Prodigiously good defender. Great forward. Um, but And I, I, to be honest, I think that's a bargain at pick 11. Um, oh, great. But uh, yeah, originally pick five. So he's one that's really paid off for the Bombers. Sydney is now on the board. I'm going to go with the other person I was tossing up with for my last pick, and that's Phil Davis. Yep. Who's been a... He's probably another one who's been like, she sort of gotten that sort of reputation as a productive player later in his career even earlier, but he's always been an outstanding key back. Not necessarily statistically, but he'll always do a job on his guy, be a good team player. He's the captain of his team. Yep. Well, he was the captain of his team. Yes, yeah. I agree. I remember in the draft of the ensuing years, people were like, Phil Davis, can't believe he went pick 10. And then again, he sort of came good after a good few years. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think he's held his position. Who you got next, Lee? I'm going to go with Liam Shields. Mm-hmm. Now, he may not be the most athletically gifted midfielder of all time, but you look at how crucial he was in Hawthorne's three-peat dynasty, and um, you could just see that he was the main reason why they did so well as a midfield group. He, he's got leadership personified, he's reasonably skilled, and um, he's just a good team player. Yep, I agree. Three premierships as well makes him probably up there with two other players Oh, no, one other play in Brewster is the most decorated, just about. Um, this is my final pick. Pick 14 of the Bulldogs. Um, I'm tossing up between two plays here, but I think I'm going to go with Jack Zeeble, um, who was originally pick nine, um, and he's put together a good career at North Melbourne um, in a team that's really never thrust themselves properly into premiership contention. Um, hasn't really had the chance for ultimate glory. I think they've made a couple of prelims in there. Um, another player who is a bit slower as a, as a midfielder, but he's kind of also developed the forward craft as well. Um, and he's still a pretty good player for North Melbourne there. So with the final pick, who are you taking? Well, I want to take Hayden Ballantyne, but seeing Sam Jacobs still on the board, it's oh, true. a bit hard to go past him. Uh, actually, as- I will intercept here because I did the same thing with Sam Jacobs. Pretty sure he was drafted the year before, but... The way the rules were back then, you had to delist a rookie and then re-rookie them. Uh, so he would have shown up in this year's rookie draft, but I think he was actually the year before. Well, okay, we'll go Ballers then. Ballers, yeah, all right, Ballers. cool. Yeah, nice one. He I was could... an All-Australian, great small forward. Yeah. Small peak, but it was a very good one. Oh, you've seen it? <laughs> oh, peak, never mind. <laughs> I can't help myself, sorry. <laughs> cool. And speaking of Manscaped, um, nah. Cool. All right. So that, that cups off um, 15 picks. Yep. All right. So that's our order redrafted. Is there anyone on the list there that you think, um, between you, that you think, oh, shit, I can't believe they didn't make the top 15? Or is anyone... Yeah. Oh, it's one of those hard ones. I mean, because there's a lot of good players that might have missed, but yeah. the 15 you've got there, or we've yeah. got there, it's, there's a lot of talent. For me, I probably think Zaharakis, he was probably yeah. my next pick. Um, Him and Stevie Hill were probably... And even oh, Jack course. Redden. True, yeah, oh, yeah. Premiership a- Adelaide, player. Tom... Is it Mitch Tom Robinson. Lynchford's the one that's at Adelaide? Yeah, he's yeah. a good player he's as well. Player. Yeah, Sean Makers. Um, what's that 26 you've got there? Uh, your mate. <laughs> <laughs> I may have written a fake note on Bush's thing. We'll, <laughs> nice. we'll leave that out. <laughs> um, cool. So to cap off the video, guys, uh, we'll start from the top with Melbourne reselecting Dan Hanbury at pick one before West Coast took Steel Sidebottom. Rory Sloan, Dane Beams, and Luke Bruce went pick three, four, and five. Nick Natnui, another eagle. Uh, actually, no, sorry, the first eagle I've named, uh, went pick six. Michael Walters and then another eagle went seven and eight before Tom Rockliffe and Daniel Rich round out the top ten. Michael Hurley slides to pick 11. Controversial. Let us know in the comments. Phil Davis goes pick 12 before Liam Shields, Jack Siebel, and Hayden Ballantyne round out our top 15. 
I think that's it guys. Thank you for watching yet another video on the True Footy YouTube channel. If you're enjoying this redraft series, do let us know in the comments. If you're enjoying seeing Lenny around, also let us know in the comments. Frankly, comments are good for the algorithm. So, really appreciate it. And we it. mean comments on YouTube, not comments when you see us in Fremantle. Or but both. those are nice. Yeah, work. I was going to say both is good. Both are nice, but... Yeah. As long as they're positive. Yeah. If only the real life comments helped on the algorithm. Yeah. Well, exactly, yeah. Cool guys, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.